This Rolex does not work. It is broken for the second time. My customer has had enough and frankly, the installation is shocking. We have an EV isolator here and a little 13 amp socket C16 RCD for the 13 amp socket in the Rolex. And then here, this is the consumer unit that's been installed. 63 amp main switch, 32 amp MCB and plenty of space to stick my fingers in and touch that buzz bar. On top, we don't have a tails gland. We've got singular insulated tails on show here and it's just been rammed in. Look at that. And that is what you get when you go for the cheapest quote. Let's see what we're dealing with. Look at these terminations. So the story goes, basically, I was asked if I could just do a swap over on this charger. And I basically said, absolutely not with what's going on in the garage. I'm installing an Omi 8 meter Home Pro tethered charger and starting again. We're putting a new board in there, running an EV Ultra cable, because there's no Cat5 here. And we're gonna do it properly this time. Pretty sure this is an SWA as well, just being rammed into a stuffing gland. Two core SWA, absolutely diabolical. This other SWA is for the 13 amp socket. Didn't even undo that stuffing gland. Armoured again, awful. Big hole in the back as well. And this is their idea of burying the cable. It's literally about two inches. Being That's gonna get annoying. It's about two inches underneath the gravel. That just came off. Completely loose. Bless me. Let's have a look in here then. So to be fair, the armoured are earthed this end, but they weren't glanded in properly the other end. I've just spotted something. This is concerning. Let's have a look. That's proper rough. How can you charge someone for that? I've got these ratchet cutters in my jointing days. Tools like this never give up. This is a major issue in the industry at the minute, is people racing to the bottom on the pricing. If you're installing EV charging points, do it properly and charge accordingly. And to the customers out there, if you get a couple of quotes for an install, and you're finding that one is maybe a couple of hundred quid dearer, there's a reason for that. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a potentially dangerous installation and you're gonna end up paying twice. Super cheap materials, no pride in their work whatsoever. Oh my God. And poor installation methods. Big broken hole in the back. It's almost like it's all second-hand gear. I don't see the point in that whatsoever. Possibly one of the worst installs I've ever seen. This job is getting worse and worse. Have a look at this and let me know what's wrong with it. Brand new board. Shocking. But never mind. I'm here to improve things, so we're starting afresh. The first thing I'm going to do today is install this six-way fuse box consumer unit. I'm gonna prepare my cable route next. I'm using the spit gun, along with these D-line clips here. Just fire straight into the wall. I use a 22 mil nail. Run out of nails again. Oh. Six mil EV Ultra. 
these D-line clips are so easy to use and it saves all that drilling and all the mess that goes with it. And the reason I put a six-way board in today is my customer wants a little bit of room for expansion for new circuits. And I'm doing something a little bit different again today with my Cat5, which I'll show you in a minute. Oh, I'm making this hard work. With my Cat5 today, I'm not joining it inside the consumer unit. I've allowed for a little bit more on the cable and I'm gonna pass it all the way through. And then I'm gonna join this in this little Wago box that I've brought with me today. And that is for my CT. And I wanna keep a little bit of length on this. So just tuck your cables down the back and then give them a nice little loop. So if anything changes in the future, you've got a bit of cable to play with. When you're installing your buzz bar, make sure you get right underneath it to ensure that you're installing it correctly. This end is now ready. Let's crack on with the charger. Today's choice of charger is the Omi. I need to be a little bit careful where I position this today because it comes pre-flexed. And I've heard from someone who left a comment for me that if you cut the pre-flex and shorten it, it will invalidate the warranty. So you need to be careful where you position it so you still have enough room to install a whisker box to connect your EV Ultra into. In a box, you get a product manual, your CT, and a little Wago box to connect it up to. And they give you Wagos for the CT, a holster, the other part of the holster, and the charger. And this is the pre-flex I'm talking about. I'm not a fan of the pre-flex because I don't like installing junction boxes if I can help it. They obviously have a reason for it. So what I mean, I want to cover up these holes if I can help it. But if I put this there, I'm not gonna have the room for the junction blocks without short cutting it down. So I'm gonna have to position it over here, I think, in order to have room for my whisker box. The Omi comes with a mounting bracket. Is this on? The Omi comes with a mounting bracket. It's got one screw in it at the top, which you need to undo. This is one of the quickest EV chargers to install, but it'd be even better if I didn't have to join the cable. But there you go, such is life. And my battery Makita drill has died. So I'm in the market for a new one, but I'm hesitant to buy another Makita one purely because I've gone through two already and I'm not very happy about it. Mobile phones ringing. You know when it feels like it's gonna rain? It feels like that, Uncle Bill's hammer. The other issue I've created myself here is I need a screw in the top here and I've given myself an obstruction. Look at that, brilliant, well done me. Fortunately, I've got one of these angle bits. It's one of those things you use once in a blue moon, but when you need it, you need it. D-Line do a variation of EV Ultra cable clips. This is the other one, which looks slightly different. Now with these ones, what you'll find with the flex, with the flex that comes off the Omi, is the other ones, they're too baggy around it. But with this one, where you've got these three slots, you can get a nice snug fixing like this so you can take it through that bottom one and then tuck that tab round and that's lovely and secure with the previous installation there's a couple of things i want to clarify i got a little bit excited with how bad of the job it was the reason that they used a two core cable and so they didn't have an earth this end is because they used an earth spike so they turned it into a tt system and they had to separate the earthing systems but the rolex charger is still a plastic enclosure so i still would have used swa cable glands rather than stuffing gland well let's do this as pass your flex cable through into your whisker box and then you can mark where you want it to go so it falls nicely Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Once you've got to this stage, what you have to do is do your dead testing through your EV Ultra cable before you connect this up. Once it's done, connect it up and then do your live testing through the unit. My next predicament, I'm gonna sneeze, is I wanna install this holster. I wanna cover up these holes if I can, and because I'm amazing, I can basically cover them up and put it central to this junction box. So everything's symmetrical. And then once I've done that, I can put away 90% of my tools. I like to pack up as I go. So these are the little jelly crimps that I'm using today. And all you need to do is pop both conductors in and squish them down. So I believe you doubt boys are bound to snag me on something on this. My other biggest nigger with the Omi charger is this is the CT they give you. And look how much length they give you. It's like nothing. So I'm really limited to where I can put this. So it's gonna go here. So all you do, Okay, I can't use jelly crimps because the connections on this CT are too big. So, sorry data boys, way goes it is. Don't forget to know your leads. And then R1, R2 is your line and your R. 0.06, that's about right. When you're looking for an EV charging point installer or electrician, that the cheapest quote is not always the best one. You're gonna sacrifice quality workmanship and the electrician's pride in his work.
thanks for watching. See you next week. Subscribe to my channel.